I will change it back. <laughs> I, you, you see my desperation, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually starting to change a WebEx profile name. You really know I'm annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, uh, some of the virtual interims, it was, um, we had the same kind of, you know, experience where that was the problem with the next slide message, right? Someone says next slide and the, chair does it instantly Torless was really <laughs> having difficulty with that and it would take a minute for it to get out to people right um so that was really weird like it should just be a single screenshot but obviously it doesn't do slide sharing with you know it does it as video sources when it's silly because right i mean most of the most of the slides they don't change if I move my mouse around here, yeah, you want to see that, but most of the time it's not important to see that. Um, there. Okay, so uh, we seem to all be trickling in here. Um, uh, we eight of us today. Dave. Uh, thank you, Dave and Hank, for the pull requests. I'm meant to spend most of Sunday doing things and i was unable to um but what i'm hoping actually is that we will get to a point at the end of friday's meeting that we'll say okay we, we've done as much as we can um and we should go ahead one reason i think we should go ahead is that i think that um you know we're going to have a bunch of 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 uh of changes that reviewers like area directors are going to ask for us anyway. And it's almost dumb to make it perfect uh, for the simple reason that um, we'll have to explain it. We'll have to do it all over again in some ways. Um, so I, I think that we're wait. I think I would rather us finish earlier and then come back than um, try to get it to the point of being perfect. I don't know if everyone else agrees with that plan. Well, like I think I think what you can do here is uh, you can do that thing and also not do not the other thing. Um, so so what we could do is we could get a submit here and say yeah that's that's what we will do for the WGLC and and still like I don't know not really in secret but in parallel uh, iron out some other nits. I mean you I can mean, you can do that. What I'm what I'm trying to say is that that. Um, uh, that my experience with the 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 ISG in the last two years, um, particularly our security ADs, is that they're extremely detailed oriented, and they spend, my opinion, far too long on working group draft reviews. So what I'm saying is that we can fix a bunch of nits, um, and then have have a complaint that we that they like the original text better without having ever seen the original text, right? Yeah, so I'm not so, really highly worried about that, to be honest, because we are, I think, actually beneath the radar of detail that is ISG, I think, already. So, so well, we I, ought I to be. Yeah. We, yeah. we ought to be. And frankly, the stuff that we're arguing about is very nuanced and it really doesn't, in, you know, probably matter on the great deal of things, except that, you know, we got feedback from people who were working with implementers who said that they didn't understand this. And so we want to clarify that. So. I think that's valuable. But what I'm trying to say is that um, we're going to get a similar level of detail from uh, our our area director review. And and, and yeah. I, I believe it's Roman as our area director. Um, and uh, so we're going to get a so level of be, there, he too. He can be very, very thorough. And Roman's reviews sometimes yeah, think... are extensive. So, and, and I still think that, uh, that it's a surprising level of detail from ISG in general. So. Um, in any case, so what, what I'm so, trying to say yeah. is that the sooner we get it in front of him, right, yeah. um, the sooner he discovers some issues that maybe we already have. Um, and and then we also may get pushback on things where we went in a particular direction and he doesn't like it. And we may have to we, it's better for, I think, us to re-explore that text while it's it's fresher in our memories than later on when we've you know we've settled it for two months already so that's why i just really want to get it 
out of out of this state here already. Um, we've been in this working group when this particular set of review stuff since beginning of December, basically. So that's a long time, two months. Um, I think there's a number of those issues that we just need to respond via email to. And uh, oh. I appreciate uh, William did a pass and Mark did you know, six or something of them as, as he thinks that they're won't fix. And I kind of plus one that and added them to the list of things I think we should talk about. But yeah, I, I think there's a bunch of these that rather than uh, figure out how to fix the text, we should figure out how to respond via email. So, Sorry, well, who did the pass? Uh, the, there's the uh, help wanted label that I added. Um, and I didn't go through all of them, but so, so some of them are from uh, me. Some of those are from uh, William said, I think we should won't fix this. Yeah. And so you're on the call here, right? And so I went through, you can see there's a bunch of things that are uh, help wanted. And so there's a couple of those that are ones that uh, uh, William had originally added won't fix then removed it and said, I think we should won't fix this. And I said, well, I think we should won't fix it as well. So I think he's got a good argument. So anyway, so I appreciate uh, going through there and I think there's probably more because I didn't go through all of them. I just looked at some of those. So, okay. So those are ones that would be worth discussing right. after we go through some uh, pull requests to see if we all agree that they're won't fix, then we can remove the help wanted label and just leave it as won't fix, and which means email response. Okay. So, I'm going to interrupt us at about 10 to, um, yeah. and I'm going to bring us back to the won't fix this and make sure we're all agreement with that then. I just wanted to highlight thanks, Dave. I think uh, everything else has been said. Okay, let's. Uh, should we start with this one? Because I have the tab open. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> phrasing of intro to unprotected evidence. Oh, that's me. Uh, everything yeah. that starts with phrasing is obviously from me. So. Um... <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, Dave had some minor changes to uh, 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 examples being pulled in and just a highlight. The, uh, I, I'm, I was well, going with unprotected so, due to, I used uh, preparing for UCCS unprotected. So there's a relationship between two parts of the sentence. But if you don't need that, I'm fine with signing. So my question, because like I said, I can live with the original. I just like fewer words is better if it has the same meaning. And so right now when you says unprotected, e.g. not signed. So in other words, for example, not signed. Are there other meanings? Because I don't want to change the meaning if there's other meanings of unprotected besides not signed. It doesn't say i.e. not signed. It says e.g. as as signing is just an example. Is there? I okay. feel that there ought to be and that I can't think yeah. of any. That, exactly. That's why I changed it to say, let's just say unsigned then because that's more specific. But. You are correct. I know that there are weird things that have air gapped systems with evidence that actually are neither signed nor a secure channel, although you could, I guess, map everything to a secure so, channel so the, somehow. I don't know. So, so the typical thing where we say the evidence is unsigned is because the channel is secure. Correct. Right. Which is yeah. what the. So, but the air gap scenario that Hank just suggest, said is. Yes, the channel is secure, but no, it's not TLS. It's secure by bullets or something, <laughs> yeah, right? Something. <laughs> um, yeah, so the air, air gap scenario is a typical thing. Uh, we sometimes uh, come back to it even here. And uh, I just wanted to not be inclusive. That, that's all, I guess. I, I couldn't tell if that air gap scenario, the, the, the bullets doubt at 904 and later actually apply to. So. I, I I know of a a single instance of unsigned air gap evidence. Yes, but I'm not would say that's the rule. So that's that's true also. <clears throat> What's wrong with unprotected? I don't know. It's it's a, uh, more, more verbose. It's more verbose because yeah, the the example might be the only example, and therefore is probably an essence. So I can live with the original. It just seems a little uh, verbose if there's a way to shorten it. So that was a suggestion. If you don't like the suggestion, feel free to reject. So <clears throat> I thought it was fine the way it was. I, uh, oh, you thought it was fine the way it was. OK. I have no strong feelings to work on that other one. So Michael or William? Uh, I don't know why. I guess uh, Ned's in the process of joining. He doesn't have audio yet. 
it had audio. He spoke to us. He just spoke to we us. We have Kathleen here too now <laughs> today. Yeah. Hi, Kathleen. Did you... Anybody else care? So I have I have one of in favor, Dave, and one opposed, Ned. Um, and Hank has doesn't care. And I think I prefer uh, I think I actually prefer unprotected, but I don't actually feel okay. that strongly. Uh, like I said, I, I'm okay either way. I just like brevity for as a tiebreaker. So if you want to reject it, that's perfectly fine with me. If others like the like to reject it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Any other comments about this text? I think that's the sole thing is the uppercase in claims. I, I, I have a my tiny comment that will come back, but not maybe with this one. Uh, due to the move of the terminology section, some of the uh, terms introduced by that are uh, maybe capitalized as a, uh, before uh, they are introduced yes. in section four. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, a, you a separate issue on that. So I, I did see the that's issues a, before. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I didn't, I, I actually did not check this one here about that. I realized yeah. it afterwards. So just, but that's why I'm highlighting. Okay. So we're and not did that one mark the issue is fixed? I didn't check. Okay. It does say fixes. Okay. Should be. Magic fixed. Okay, so let's maybe we can close this one. This one was, I think, difficult, at least for me to decide what to do. But I liked your solution, Dave, I think. Uh, um, and by the way, uh, they did, uh, I, I did bring up that stable URL issue, and you can see in line 130, that's the stable URL that they gave me. And awesome. it was already there. I just didn't notice it before. But uh, latest that that one it redirects to the PDF that I had up last time, but that is the one that the button actually goes to. And so. They said so use that. Sorry, sorry to be uh, nagging Nancy here, but uh, the version 1.0 1, 1. that is hard coded might not relate to the target anymore if it changes with latest. Is that correct? Because that is not a stable no, reference. I think we're okay with the newer version. I, it's I, okay, no, probably. Hey, hey, but, Hank, you're saying should we remove v1.0 from the title yes. in the reference? I think that's yes. a fine suggestion. I'm okay if you do that. Okay. And then it is if you're fine with volatility in the reference with respect to the version, then yeah, we should remove the one. Thank you. Yeah, I meaning your point is the title and the target should be equally version agnostic or equally version yes. specific. Yeah, I get that. I, I agree. It's more like a formal comment, like a actual yeah, yeah, that's right. All um, right. So here, the original thing filed was, uh, should we define mutual a mutual attestation? And last time we said, well, we don't define mutual authentication either. And so rather than that, I tried to change mutual to in both directions to kind of define it in layman speak in context rather than defining a term for it. So hopefully people think that the meaning is the same because it doesn't mean that you're doing attestation at the same time, right? It's not like right. there's one exchange that does attestation mutually and you, at the end of it, it could be that you do one way and at some later point you do attestation in the other direction and then you do the thing. Um, and so this in both directions, I thought was more clear and would address that issue. So that affects you two places in the text. So the other actually, was, a, they yeah. are equivalent, I think. I, I, I'm surprised by uh, having mutual associated with at the same time. I don't think that mutual implies that. Also, no, that but it only... does for like TLS with mutual authentication. It often implies that. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. It's yeah, I see. And and that's, that's mutual a authentication argument. or attestation. If people think at mutual attestation means what mutual authentication means, okay, mutual authentication often means implies the same time just because of the way the TLS works. At the point of uh, execution or operationalization, you 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 have mutual authentication. When that happened, is not of interest to you. It, it has to be yeah, valid yeah. and fresh. So, yeah, but you that's can imagine right. that you attest in uh, one so, direction and then you cache it for you know a, a yeah. week or something like that, and the other direction happens every connection, that kind of thing. So, but, sure. but, but, that makes yeah, sense. I, yeah. I see a point, but the only thing that uh, that's actually of concern is my question is: Would people expect the term mutual here or not? If that is okay with both directions, I will 
be fine with this. So I, because mutual yeah. obligation, mutual is like a thing you people you that you really recognize, like an intuitive thing. And, and but, maybe, but the, my point is, I don't want the same assumptions around the word mutual yeah. to apply okay. here. So that as with the TLS. Okay, I get yeah. it. Thank you. Then it's fine. Uh, so you see the words around nine fifteen. Um, I expanded to have the text be the same as in the previous section. So you can see previously, it, you said as discussed in RP owner trust. Similarly, uh, and so the lines 923, sorry, 921 to 924 are basically copied from the previous section because they apply equally here. So um, I expanded the sentence just so that uh, they don't have to scroll back and forth to get the same point. So that, that's the, you know, the, uh, in which case, typically, one side's identity or evidence must be considered safe to share with an untrusted entity. That that's the phrase that would have appeared in the section, the earlier section, the relying party section, and I copied it down to here. If that's okay with people, yeah, looks fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the. Paragraph that I added in the privacy consideration section, which you can see is uh, forward pointed to from both of those. Privacy considerations is the one that in it already talks about PII and the collapsed part that you don't see on the screen right now. Um, I think it's in the top collapsed part uh, around 1163, somewhere up there. Um, yeah, PII 1173 on the right, you can see is where it starts talking about PII appearing in evidence and so on. So that term is already used in the same section. So at the bottom, right after the discussion of um, uh, the the same notion of attestation in each direction, you can see the expansion in 1194 to 1197 that talks about, you know, first and, and so on as an example. And then this is my proposed text, feel free to wordsmith, uh, that's the reference of the CCC deep dive for the anonymous attestation. And this was my attempt. If you got a better phrasing, feel free. But this was my attempt to do it in maybe one sentence plus a reference. But uh, okay, hopefully I didn't I get it wrong. For more context than DAA, because for DAA I would actually go to the uh, Surrey guys who basically built DAA. But effectively, if I put this aside, I think that your uh, document is more digestible <laughs> than. Uh, yeah. It is. I'd rather point people yeah. to the CCC document for the longer discussion, yeah. but I didn't want to get the technical stuff wrong. So I was going to ask maybe, um, Ned, do you think that this is the correct definition of, say, how EPID works, or do you want to wordsmith this to make sure that it applies? Uh, no, I thought it was fine. Okay, thank you. Then I am fine with this also. I think it's digestible text is better than devolving into a we had uh, specific stuff. If, if, are you okay uh, when I do the generic uh, editorial pass to switch, for example, um, then the change above uh, PII and the uh, uh, actual term with the actual term and then PII? Because you're introducing PII somehow and then explain it with what it means. I think it should be the other way around, but that's just editorial. If you're fine with that. We don't have to cover that here. Um, it's already expanded in the same section before this use, so I'm not sure I understand your question. So probably um, yes, but I don't understand what you're proposing because okay, it is okay, defined. Okay. It is defined and spelled out before this, uh, like three okay, paragraphs. Okay, if you move up, if you move up, just 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 thirty seconds on this, I will be very you, fast. You talk about the eleven sixty three, eleven seventy three. Next, next green blob. Sorry, next green blob. Uh, okay, I don't know. There's so no PII was, any place outside of the privacy oh, oh, considerations. Oh, the term never applies. Okay, so whatever ever PII is introduced to introduce the action room, it's weird. Yeah, the first time it appears in the document is at 1173 in the beginning of the privacy consideration section. Okay, can we go to 1173, please? And there you can see that the action room is introduced, which is the wrong way around. Oh, okay, I understand what you're saying. You're saying put... Person identifying information outside the parentheses and PII inside the parentheses. Yes, yeah, okay. I agree so with you. We just, yeah, okay. I will fix this later. We don't have to do yeah, this. Yes, please do that. I, I I agree with you. I always do it that way too. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, you can't do it in here, Michael, because it's not in your uh, the revised text. It's in no. the. Yeah. Just a tiny nit. So um, next item we can uh, complete this. Yeah. And, uh, all right, so uh, are we done with this part then? Done. Sounds like it. I heard Ned and Hank in 
We all explicitly okayed it. And hopefully that had the fixes keyword in it. Maybe. Yep. Okay. All right. 235. There's a 265 that fixes 235. Okay, so um, this one was newly a, filed since last week, correct? So it might be yeah. worth opening the uh, issue filed. Yeah, the issue is like ages old, and somehow I think we missed a rebase or merge because there was something fixing this, and it was lost in time and space. So I recreated it basically from scratch. Let's briefly glance at issue two thirty five, so you know what this one is addressing. It's referenced. Oh, sorry, I thought the, I just uh, clicked on it. Thought it was clicked. I clicked on it. Oh, there it is. Okay, Thomas filed this one. Okay, I see Thomas, you're here. Yep. Okay, so Hank, under your definition, entity is like an implementation or something that uh, fulfills a role. In the yeah. in role is the participant in the architecture. Exactly. So entity is okay. the the the, the uh, like an implementation if it's code. Term. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so like I, implementation I, I, if it's code. Typically, I find this is a problematic term because of the eat. Uh, and, and the EA token uh, basically uses reuses entity in a different way, um, but yeah, that's why I'm not sure that your definition of entity is uh, ubiquitously accepted. But uh, if we no, just want to keep not. using the term roles instead of entities and just uh, try to avoid the term entities, except where we can't come up with uh, uh, another sorry, term. Sorry, then that was uh, okay. Then I have to uh, lose a few words here. Um, so entity is fine. Uh, sorry, roles is fine. Yeah, yeah. Entity is a problem. So I would like uh, entity is, is too broad. Uh, it's a problem. The same problem is with artifact. Uh, I understand why we use artifact uh, because we mix claims and uh, me con conceptual messages and and some yeah. other messages that are not even conceptual message of the architecture. So that's why artifact is there. Okay. But for um, with roles, roles aggregate on things that are less than entities. And typically they would be referred to as actors, but I think we dismissed that at some point. So I'm I'm, I'm okay mm -hmm. as a compromise, but still I'm a little bit like really, why entities? <laughs> why don't we define the bucket where we put things in? And so that that's but that's the last time I will raise this. I will okay, let's go to the let's go to the pull request. Yeah, let's. I don't want to spend too much time on this one, but yeah, yeah, me neither. I think we had this discussion already, and I just re restating it. So no. Okay, so this is just fixing. Uh... Um, it, so that it's formatting. Okay, so here I need you to do delete typically a device, All right? Because that's not the point of that issue. And it's also very specific to certain use cases. It's true for certain use cases and false for other use cases. And since this is the definition section, not the use case section, it doesn't belong here. It might be in the use case section for a particular use case. I might say that where we talk about who's the relying party, but I believe it doesn't belong here. So I deleted that from two places in my suggestion. I, I think you're, I'm absolutely fine with you, but I, I try to actually uphold your um, layout principle of symmetry because every definition has this. So it's, this one should also, which is your guiding principle for the examples. So no, I, I actually am. If there's anything that said typically a device, I think we should remove it. So I don't want to add it here. Yeah. It, it, it's, if it's there's fine. some other one that has it in the definition, then I didn't all notice that, then we should remove that. All so. other have them. All of the definitions have them now. And for symmetry reasons, okay. and I know that you like that. Uh, I edited I, actually. I do. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to edit. I, I am more a friend of leniency. Okay. <laughs> not cooking. Then I would propose that uh, remove it from here, and in a separate mm -hmm. request, we can make it be symmetric by removing it from the other ones if it appears. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's literally in every definition now. Yeah, it seems like we had this conversation 
way back and and put and added the parenthetical. Okay, we can go back on the git blame log and figure it out and not have to repeat it. But uh, I, I'm saying since that wasn't the point of uh, 235 that this is meant to fix, I don't think this pull request should be doing that um, okay. because there's some, uh, at least in my opinion, there's a little bit of a dispute about whether this is actually typical. So, so it varies greatly by use case. Yeah, I, I uh, skip uh, scope creep with intent here. You're correct. Uh, the, the the issue at hand does not require this fix. I'm fine with removal. Yeah, just uh, imagine a case where you have uh, two VMs on the same machine, one attesting to the other, right? The relying party is not a device; it's another VM on the same on the same device, right? So things like that. I'm saying it varies by use case. Just to give you an example, so. Are you capturing that for removal or just delete the uh, um, as except sorry the um, yeah, I did th there's two of these I did the same thing in two of these there's two suggestions I have so, so we're 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 taking a suggestion for okay. this pull uh, request uh, yes unless, unless, unless yeah. there's an um, objection here of course yeah I'm okay with the proposed text so okay. this is formatting formatting. Um, and then I think I added a period for consistency in somewhere near the end, uh, right there. Oh. All the other ones had periods, but that one didn't. That wasn't something you changed. You can see that was white text before. I just yeah. noticed it scrolling yeah, yeah. past. Since you were doing a consistency pass, I figured I'd help you. <laughs> Thank you for uh, <laughs> attention to detail. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, it looks good to me now if you commit the suggestion. Um. So Thomas, does that uh, in the end um, satisfy uh, why you uh, actually raised this issue? Yes, thank you very much, Hank. Sure. I can see it gets a little bit more wordy, but I understand Hank's point. So instead of uh, the ones that are humans, right, where it used to say like a relying party owner, you know, an entity that does whatever. And so often the owner is referring to, you know, an admin or somebody acting as an admin and Hank's text changed it to, you know, an entity acting in that role. And I think that's that's fine, you know, because you have humans that do other things. And when when I have on my work hat or whatever, that I'm acting in that role, whatever. So I think it's not incorrect. It's just a little bit more wordy, but I thought it was okay. And yep, and that one did have fixes outside the title. I don't think it recognizes fixes in the title, but it's in the description, so it's good. It's good. It, it does have it in there. Um, and then I think the la that one hasn't been updated since last time, right? Uh, I no, scrolled I'm down. I'm already. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm hopefully yeah, but, that's behind so I'm just saying, on this. Yeah, yeah. So we're not ready to talk about this one. Let's push this into Friday. Okay. Cool. All right, so uh, let's walk through the ones that said uh, won't fix, well, that right? Or yeah, needs help. Or at least help wanted, because I think one or two of the won't fix without that label are ones that we'd already talked about. Um, and so that since, yeah. Now, this one is not necessarily a won't fix. Uh, this one, I think Hank and I had exchanged, uh, and you can see I've assigned this one to me. Um, since uh, my queue was basically drained. Um, and so uh, I think Hank and I are in agreement and I agree with Hank's suggestion. And so let's just talk about that. And if so, then I can have a pull request for Friday. So um, can you see his question is uh, about uh, how it relates to TPMs. And uh, my response is that a TPM by itself is not the attesting environment. The TPM plus whatever is feeding at the measurements together forms the environment. And Hank's point is, well, let's phrase it in the positive sense instead of the negative sense and say, what is the testing environment? Does that sound like a feasible approach? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I like that idea. Let's do it. Hank just Hank suggested there. If okay. That looks, so, if that looks okay, then I think Hank, which happened while I was sleeping, um, that approach looks fine. And if everybody's okay with that, we can remove help, for help wanted, leave it assigned to me, and I'll come back for Friday. Wonderful. Any objections? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so here, this one, you really need to read in context because I can't think of any way to make the text be clearer. So I don't know what to do other than respond an email, um, but you actually have to look at the text to see that. It's the second paragraph. So what he's quoting is the beginning of the first paragraph in the section, and it's kind of an odd order, but I don't know how to improve it. So you have to look for it in context to see what, um, I think this is one of Guy's comments, right? Yeah, so this is the section two types of environment for an attester. Yeah. So if you can bring up that text for all stall stare at, maybe somebody else will have an idea, or maybe we'll all agree. Let's just respond an email. So, okay. Um, damn, that's all I, I was looking at taking this one since nobody else had looked at it, then said, huh, I can't think of any other way to do this. So I'm stuck. Is it just a forward reference? Yes, it, it's basically a forward reference type issue. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Some of the uh, same yeah. sections. So look at the two paragraphs. Okay. So he's reading that part. He says, an attester consists of at least one attesting environment, at least one target environment. Right. And I think his gut reaction is, well, you haven't kind of defined those yet because you kind of keep talking about that. And some of them, they might be combined and so on. The actual definitions are in the next paragraph, right? Claims are collected from target environments. You know, target and testing environments collect the values and so on. So that's really the definition is there. But you can see it's like uh, the next paragraph. And I thought about, is there some way to like swap the order of the paragraph? I said, well, no, that wouldn't make sense to talk about what they are without saying how they relate to an attester. So I couldn't figure out a way to improve this because the definitions are there. Um, but their definitions are in the paragraph after use. And so I don't know how to improve this text. <clears throat> Can you reference figure two sooner? Uh, yes. As okay. explained in figure okay. two, or as shown in figure two, well, and it yeah, see... consists of at least one testing environment, and at least one target environment. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because you see at the beginning of the, in the second paragraph, it ends in as shown in figure two, the first sentence. Yeah. So we could just take that phrase and move it up to the first sentence of the first paragraph. Instead of claims, you know, just say claims are collected from target environments, period, in the second paragraph. And say, and put the as shown in figure two in the first paragraph. I like that, Ned. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that fixes this stuff, but it makes it better. It, it, it helps the tie the reader's yeah. attention to something visual instead yeah. of them having to imagine something out of abstractness. And then we can probably switch the order between the figure and maybe move the figure up in between the two paragraphs. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. But next Great suggestion. suggestion. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So exactly what do we what do I with wanted. this? What 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 about what about this this bit of sentence okay. that's left here? Uh, uh, Michael, are you doing it? Are you doing have, any edits, Michael, or shall yeah, I do I'm edits? Doing it, I'm, just, I'm doing it in my okay. editor and I because I don't okay. have an issue that I can open, but I'll push the issue okay. in one second. Okay. So let me summarize. Leave the, the text that you have highlighted, leave that exactly there. But the as shown in figure exactly two there. phrase. Yeah. The as shown in figure two phrase, move that to the first sentence of the first paragraph. Yeah, I got that. Okay. okay. And I moved and it then there, take and the move diagram, diagram and up. move it up in between the two paragraphs. And that's it. Okay, so this is what we wind up with.
feel uncomfortable still about this sentence just ending like that, but. It, 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 it should be <clears throat> one sentence or one thought. I, I think it's fine, Michael. <clears throat> Your your pull request, I approve. <laughs> okay, and then assume stupid trailing spaces that the linter wants me to. Okay. Uh, I didn't fix uh, it. Yeah, do we want to mark it as fixes? Um, this is 232. 69. Okay, so um, next help wanted. Yeah, so these are the two that uh, William looked at, and then I looked at it in three. Uh, so I had my comment at the bottom of here, which is, um, so if you remember right in our list of use cases, we have a confidential ML model one, and then we have a confidential data one that is immediately after that. And uh, as I mentioned in my comment at the bottom here, the uh, confidential data one is immediately after that, and it explicitly says at the beginning, this is a generalization of the confidential ML model, which could be any type of data. It's kind of how that intro sentence begins. And so he says, isn't it kind of a duplicate? And he says, well, yeah, we point that out ourselves. Um, and you can see in my comment, I said, uh, but I think it's still useful to have both of them for two reasons. Um, one, because the ML model is a very popular one, and so some people might be looking for that, and so they'll get a hit on that keyword, that's one. But number two, because um, although the line between code and data is fuzzy, the confidential ML model one is closer to a confidential code distribution, and the confidential data is more like confidential data, which many people think of as different, even though, like I said, often the line between data versus code is really fuzzy. Well, people are also very much uh, uh, attuned to the concept that they need to obfuscate their code to keep yeah. it confidential. Yeah. But yeah. they think that they should encrypt their data, right? Right, and right. Um, and so they come to the belief that there's different solutions. And I think that that's okay that that they think of them differently, but that they really are, uh, uh, mm -hmm. they, they converge to the same solution, but they start with a different problem, maybe a different risk assessment even. So both of us think that this is worth an email response, but no change to the doc. And it sounds like you have a similar but marginally different point michael if you can capture that in here just so when we compose the email we can make sure that your point is not forgotten to about you know encryption versus obfuscation um but like i said i don't uh, i agree with william this does not warrant a change to the doc i looked back at the text in the doc and i think that the text is just fine as is Uh, both are just what they are. <clears throat> but, but both require confidentiality protection. I think your point was you're going to do the same thing for both of those, but the people think about them differently, even though the te the, the solution technology is the same. Okay, so fine. All right, so let's go back so to the next. If, every, if everybody else has agreed, the, then you would just please just remove the help wanted label and just leave it as won't fix, which I guess can be our code uh, for saying we're actually in agreement with won't fix. It's not just a proposal. So okay. Generate evidence, not just have it. Oh. See, William's comment, and I think he's right. <coughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I also agree. Okay. Okay, so um, that was the help wanted. That, that's as far as I got. I did not go through all of them looking for other yeah. things to add help wanted to, but uh, since I saw everything else had somebody assigned to it, I, I, I did not we go through it. Oh, there's Hank's brand new ones. We could look at Hank's brand new ones, see if we have any, any uh, advice for how, how to address those. Uh, I think Thomas, you filed yours as a result of the discussion last week. Yeah. Okay, so here, this is what Hank was just alluding to. Uh, my question, should we change the word? So artifact just comes to the section heading. It does, it's not actually used in the text. It's just the name of the section heading, right? Um, my, my question is, I wonder if we can avoid the term artifacts then. What if we change it to data, which we at least have in, the, in things like conceptual data flow? Conveyed data? Maybe. Yeah, to have a qualifier next to data is like, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just data. trying to minimize, uh, yeah. minimize uh, new terms, minimize number of new terms, and you're mm -hmm. pointing out in terms of artifacts is is uh, kind of spawned into existence and never again. You see here's a section name and never again is what you said. Ha, huh, you're right. Let's see if we can get rid of the term artifacts. If, see if there's some term we already use that could be the same thing. So data is the closest thing I could come up with. It's the one. Um, there's no good solution for this if you wouldn't want to invent terms. So that's I, a, I, so so. It, it, down, that's, yeah. yeah, I, I didn't really like your idea. Of let's take this section, split into multiple subsections. If claims yeah. would be the only thing, so I, I like let's just keep them together and see if there's a name that this that's already used somewhere. So we obviously I'm, use I'm rowing. Okay. But. I'm okay with the this being artifacts. Okay. Um, we 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 implicitly use the word artifacts whenever we use any of these things. These are all artifacts. We just didn't need to to pollute the the uh, document by repeating it over and over and over again. That's all. Um, but I actually really like the word artifacts as particularly for something that is a signed uh, object. So you think we should? So that's if I'm hearing right, that's one vote to won't fix that particular point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was, Again, the this is a, this is a argument, what was the argument for changing it? It's only used once. Heading. You can't refer to it. Or, 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 or better that uh, we, we do not refer to artifacts at all. So why use that? The, the, but we, we don't have a catch-all name. And, um, and we, use, we use conveyance and conveyed data is more to the... Uh, essence but i also uh, uh, acknowledge uh, michael's input that yeah but that basically is okay artifact is the catch all here what do you think you know, Ned? the tcg document uses the term role messages yeah i don't like that at all yeah I don't <laughs> like claim claims are also not role messages uh, yeah so, so i'd say that. good data point but i don't think it'll, it's usable here um, I'm fine with Walt fixing this. And I don't feel strongly either way. I, I, I said I don't want to spend much time on this one since I think it's really yeah. nitty. Yeah, it's, it's, it's declared it as nit, so this is just a nit, but uh, for the sake of uh, consistency at least. I suspect we've already spent our time budget on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 we won't fix. Won't fix is fine. Okay. Uh, but 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 with the issue, so we are dancing around the bucket for roles a lot in this document. We are not trying to establish a term. Sorry, am I, is that a new a new right. issue? Oh, no, that is the first bullet point. We just addressed That's the, the first point. bullet. I just wasn't sure because yeah. you just said won't fix, and then I was like, okay, but you're now talking about entities. This part, okay, fine. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. So. That, that's still there. So, so I, this is the last time I ever raised this and I will rest forever and uh, uh, hold my peace. But uh, um, entity is an awful term, sorry. It's just everything. And I think for roles, actors is like the, 
very intuitive counterpart that we are dancing around here. So why are we avoiding that? Uh, uh, maybe that is the best question to ask here. Uh, I don't remember this coming up before, so I don't have an opinion at this point. I mean, it may have come up in meetings before me, but. Yes, yeah, so we were forced to uh, relinquish participants as a, in a computing science term, which is okay, although other RFCs most definitely use it. And then uh, we were like, okay, we boiled it back, uh, we simplified roles and actors, that's an intuitive pair. So roles <laughs> aggregate on actors, but somehow uh, that was also not okay. And then we were dancing around again, using entity, never defining it, being very broad. And so this is the last time we bring this up back. Uh, back, back up. So uh, why not use actor as the bucket to uh, aggregate roles in and say, and this actor uh, takes on these roles and that actor takes on these roles and then they interact with conceptual messages and protocols and architecture. So that, that is relatively simple, I think. But uh, if it's if, if Dave just as Dave highlighted, maybe it's predating some of the attendees uh, attendance, um, bringing this back up is good. Um, so that's my proposal. Uh, actors seems to be quite more useful than the very catch all entity, which is me. I'm an entity and my parents are. So what, why? I said, I don't have any opinion. I'd have to actually have to see text. So just from my perspective, if somebody wanted to generate a pull request and then we can decide whether it won't fix it on Friday, that's okay with me. I don't have an opinion at this point. So it's, it's one of those that, uh, if you show me it, which is clear, A or B, I can probably make a decision. But uh, right now I don't have enough information to say anything. Do you need an excerpt? So like, like about a portion of the text? Because going through all the uh, uh, ID text and, and, and making it as, as an example, might be a little bit extensive for being rejected. So do 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 three of example? do like three of them, okay? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So what, on three of them. Why, why wouldn't we just refer to some definition of entity? Uh, because entity yeah. isn't something that's in the, the protocol or the architecture that actually uses. It's not a term that we have to define to to be understandable, right? So I don't, yeah. I, everything else in the glossary section is something that's inherently sort of special about rats. There's nothing special about the word entity. So, but aren't we aren't yeah. we are discussing the definition of entity? I'm trying not to discuss the definition. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. We're dancing around that, and so entity is well defined, like, and it, it, it includes way more than we want to intend to be used here. That's my only problem with it. It's like, no, I don't want to define the term artifacts in the glossary either. Uh, yeah. you know, and then every word that that one gets defined as. I mean, at some point you have to stop and exactly. say, it's layman speak. Exactly. An actor, we don't have to define because actors take on roles. And that, that's just going yeah. the same thing. So, yeah. I mean, uh, in theory, your point is valid, but it's like, I don't know. I, I'll, I, I don't know it until I see it. So, yeah, sure. I will create an example of uh, some of the. Uh, occurrences and then we can discuss this on Friday. Okay. Uh, yeah, this was um, so this one I did not I, I saw this briefly, but I didn't actually open up the document to look for an example. Because you're saying when we did that reordering of putting things before other things relatively recently, you're saying that may have messed up uh forward references or something and i wanted to see a specific example in the document where that's true i thought it was because we moved the ex moved the uh use cases up is it and that's why we wound up with the forward references uh what, a test <coughs> like, yeah, party a tester, what? replying so party this, no i thought when we talked about it before this is from memory so i could be wrong but i thought in section one those terms were used in context uh, yeah there we go First paragraph, one peer, the attester produces, no, the previous paragraph, yeah, that one, that one right there introduces in text the meanings of attester and underlying party. So those two terms and only those two terms become usable for the glossary. And then they're formally defined later, but that's why it's usable in the reference section. We did talk about this when we did that move, is that paragraph right there for just those two terms and nothing else makes that okay.
I, 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 when we move technically there's a third one, but the use case doesn't use verifier. You can see verifier at the end of that paragraph, but that doesn't affect Hank's issues. So, so, so I, I would, uh, when it comes to reference use cases, referring, using forward references, I don't have a problem with that. And I, and I prefer it because um, I, I don't mind if, if, if readers don't quite understand the formal definitions of these words while they're reading the use cases. But then when they read the use cases, suddenly sorry, the terminology, they're like, okay, this is tightening up those things and I could page back and put it in context. But actually I've got a much better idea of what the context is now. And I find documents um, that are kind of medical in the way that they, um, you know, they define all these terminologies up front and I have no idea which ones are important terms or not or how they're gonna be used. So I can't even judge what the glossary means, right? I wind up having to read, I skip the glossary, I have to read forward anyway. And then when I get to a term that I'm uncertain about it, I have to go back to the glossary. So mm -hmm. um, so I think that the glossary or terminology section is is always kind of um, out to the right of the document, right? You, you, you always wind up having to go back to it, whether it's up or down, it just doesn't matter. Um, you get to something where you realize there's a that the term is being used more precisely than you your brain has figured out yet. You have to go back to it, and it doesn't matter if it's forward or backwards. I just think it looks nicer the way it is with it after the references. So I don't have any problem with us using forward references in the in the use cases. Um, well, uh, my belief is I'm saying that they're not forward references; they're backwards references to this well, paragraph well, right here. So, which is so why you're I'm arguing you're, you're arguing that this this opens up a couple of terms as backward references anyway. Yeah, and yeah, I'm kind yeah. of saying that that that's true, but I'm arguing that the 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 rule, the backward reference rule is so should, should be suspended anyway, yeah. is what I'm but trying to like, say. Sounds like we're both just arguing for won't fixing. Yeah. I, for, but yeah, for different for, reasons. Different reasons. I mean, look, we have we have other things like, you know, roles and models and appraisal and other things in here that are not uppercase, but <clears throat> You got to start somewhere. Yeah. I'm fine so is there is there a part here, Hank, that you feel still feel that we need to do something um, about? So no, I just I just want to say so my my proposal would be capitalize things that are in the terminology. If people encounter them before the terminology section, it's like oh that's capitalized. That might have some oh, meaning. So if we're missing standard. So you're saying that we may ah. be missing missing okay. a capitalization okay. throughout okay. the process, throughout yeah. the use cases. Uh, so so move on to four, yes. I think Hank does have a point, but it's not on a, a tester ah. or a relying party. So if you go to claims here, you look at claims. Ah. Two point one has a term claims. Want to get claims at the fourth line, and it's like the eighth word or something in two point one, and there's claims, and it's not capitalized because, but it should, I guess. So, so if you if you have defining it in four, just capitalize it, and it's like, oh, this is capitalized. Maybe I should remember that when encountering the definition, or maybe there's a definition. I'm curious right now. I'm skipping forward to four. So, so that's the uh, that's the style question I have here. So, does this uh, go back to the the abstract? Yes. Abstract? Uh, no, abstract doesn't count. <laughs> we can do it in abstract, but uh, but but beyond that, in the body of the text, uh, uh, I think that's. That's fine with me because we move the terminology basically in the, the meat of it, like in the middle of it. And, and that's fine, as Simon pointed out. But, uh, but, but I think we should re retain the idea of capitalization of these terms. So there's other, other instances further down on the document where the claims is not. Yeah, like, what about, what about claims there. collection? Is that a capitalized claims? I guess so, because uh, the claims collection is not a different term. That term is common in many IETF contexts. I think right now that one was the, in, the intent, whether the intent is good or bad, was it's capitalized starting at the glossary and afterwards, but un, uncapitalized before that. And if there's cases where that's not true, then we can talk about that or fix them or whatever. I would say claims collection is lower case in my opinion, but. Okay, it's about maybe maybe hyphenated or dash it or whatever, but but that doesn't that doesn't point. So my my problem, so my my point is that claims should be 
have a, have a capitalized C. It's, just, it's a very nifty thing, I know. When, uh, when used by itself, like in this paragraph, it is twice in the first sentence. Or first sentence and second sentence, I mean. Uh, yes, exactly. That, 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 and in the third line of that paragraph, it is lowercase, right below Michael's yes, character, right there. Right. Exactly. So that so one just, is wrong. I'm saying we should fix that one, sure. That's okay, or let the RFC all editor do it. Standalones. Okay. <clears throat> all standalones, not uh, otherwise uh, uh, semantically tied claims, should be adhered to uh, terminology. And then uh, uh, we do this with all the terms in the uh, section four. And then I'm fine with that. I think this actually yeah. helps the reader. What about this one? Uh, no. Yeah, I would agree. Similarly no. tied. Yes. This is qualified by identity. Because so. this one is by analogy. This one isn't talking about a claim in the rat sense. It's saying a claim in the rat sense is similar to an identity claim in the passport sense. So I would say maybe not, but. Uh... I'm fine with this. Why is identity capitalized? It's not. Not if you scroll, if you zoom in, it's just a rendering. Rendering, yeah. It Makes us fully rendered, yeah. <laughs> I, I had to look up in a different place where I thought it was capitalized, and it's not. So, the, the, on Michael's screen, being projected, the lowercase eyes look like the uppercase eyes because it doesn't render the space in between the top. And... Okay. Well, so. Uh, we agree with the the the, the algorithm here, um, and so what we probably should do is um, I think I've got all the claims, but I'm going to make a pull request about claims, mm -hmm. and I would suggest that we make a pull request for other ones so that we can uh, and I hope we won't have to discuss this as a group. Um, we can just review and say we got them right or not. Yeah. RFC Ed will uh, fix this in the end. In any right, case, right, but right. we could just. Oh, but they'll come back to us at Auth 48 and ask yeah. us, and then we'll have to have a three hour discussion as to whether we got it. <laughs> oh my God. Sure. No, no, right. Reduce I, the I, workload here. That's a thing. Thing. This style of stuff is not where I think we should be spending most of our time. So let's just yeah. something simple and move on. Okay. It's top of the hour. Um, yeah. We still have some issues that don't have names attached to them. Um, one? This one needs to be, well, this one is Thomas, and I know it's pulled by there, but I think everyone okay. else, ha all the other issues have a, either won't fix or has a name attached to it. So please look through your names. If you're looking through here, you can put your name and get just whatever is attached to you. Um, so I'm going to be trying to bug anybody on Thursday. Mm -hmm. who I don't see a pull request for something closing. And I would like us to be able to say after Friday's meeting that um, we're done with this, with this round and that we would like it to go on to the AD review who will no doubt cause us to uh, open or re revisit issues um, at that I thought point. Close open issues. We can, we can freeze them in place. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to close okay. them. We'll mark them as as yeah. later or something or whatever. I just want to make sure that we have pull a mark on them. That says, <laughs> yeah, I pull the document. That that, but but we should have some mark on them that says so we can tell if someone's opened a new issue or something like that. Yep, yep. Fine with me. And thank you for raising that, Michael. I think you're addressing a a, a host of majorities concern here. <laughs> Great. Okay. All right. We'll talk on Friday. Remember, we're an hour later than we yep. than this time, whatever this time is for you. Um, and there is a was an invite in the mailing list, and many of you answered already. So that's great. Thank you very much. Right. Six Thanks yes, three no, four maybe. Just yeah, I got. I get, it, it, interesting thing about posting a a a. a, a, a what do you call it? A, a, a invite to the mailing list is you get all sorts of people that aren't really that heavily involved and they say no. <laughs> and you're like, I've never heard of that person in my life. But, you know, it's great to know they're on the mailing list. All right. Kathleen, any questions from you? No, sorry. I was multitasking I uh, during this entire call with multiple things. So I listened, caught some of it, but um, 
When you're ready for me to do another read through, I will do that. Um, and we're having a snow day and my computer wasn't working for work. So I'm having a really great morning. Really? Your computer gets snow days? Oh my God, we don't even get to close the schools. We just cancel the school buses and make the but, kids get driven. But un unfortunately, so my son is here home and unfortunately I have VDI access. So I was able to connect via my home laptop. So oh, right, I, I get it I now, yeah. Really, my laptop gets a, a snow day, but I do not. Oh, I see, well, all right. So I was busy getting my that son, set up while listening my, to this call. My son is back in, the school's open this week again, and he's back in school for the first time in six weeks, and uh, he he doesn't, it was a, it was, it, it was a, it was, well, yeah. he's, he's a teenager, so he didn't want to go to, get up or go to school anyway. But it was extra difficult. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys on Friday at what's 11 a.m. for me. 1600 oh. UTC. And my, my son wants to show you his uh, submarine. Oh, okay. Awesome. Lego fans. Turn on, turn on the thing. Where's the submarine? Yeah, there we go. So I can't. Hi, see Jude. <laughs> I don't know why I can't. So let's see. Well, that is. Okay. Is it Lego? That's wow. Lego. Wow. It was built yesterday on his snow day. Does it work in the tub? <laughs> Uh, we're not going to try that. <laughs> oh, it's Lego. Work. It'll work it's in the Lego. Top. It doesn't float, you know. Not always. Uh, too <laughs> heavy. All right. All right. It's too heavy. Okay. <laughs> Great. Bye bye. It would go yeah. all the way. You're now in the. I didn't. I didn't done press record, so you're now the, the submarine is now a part of the IT official transcript. I'm sure some Lego fans will appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> okay. We bring right. Lego to the Reds group sometimes. I I can relate. <laughs> And Kathleen is my mom. They know. Yeah. All right. I missed the train, man. Bye.